Malaysia Day, the day that people from Sabah, Sarawak and the Peninsula get together in one tight group hug and celebrate our love for the beautiful country called Malaysia. But this is not always the case though. For Sabah, one of the reasons for not always enjoying our little group hug is an initiative known as Project IC. We all know the story. In 1963, the government of Malaya invited Sabah, Sarawak and Singapore to come together and form Malaysia. The agreement was that all parties would be equal partners in this new nation. There's also language that acknowledges each partner's unique cultural heritage. From having no official state religion, to personal choice over their official language. But, as it turns out, government policies often did not reflect this agreement. One policy, known as Project IC, drastically re-engineered Sabah's population. From the 60s to early 2000s, Sabah's population grew by 300%. When compared with other states, the anomaly is unmissable. It wasn't just net population numbers that changed. The composition changed drastically too. The percentage of Muslims in Sabah as registered in the 1960 census was at 37.9%, with non-Muslims making up the majority at 62.1%. According to the 2010 census, Muslims are now the majority at 65.4%. Suspicions arose in the 90s with NRD officers being arrested under the ISA specifically over their involvement in issuing various documents to illegal immigrants. These documents included MyCard, MyCard receipts, and IMM13 cards. Then, in 1999, the election results for the Likas constituency was nullified after thousands of dubious names were found on the electoral vote and Sabahan started demanding answers. In 2012, a good decade and some years later, a Royal Commission of Inquiry, RCI, was formed to investigate the claim. It was chaired by Tan Sri Steve Shim, the former chief judge of Sabah and Sarawak, and spanned 18 months, with over 300 witnesses brought forward. Details started to emerge showing that from the 1970s, identity cards were issued en masse to non-citizens, most of whom were recent migrants or refugees. In 2013, the RCI came to a conclusion. It was found that Project IC was more likely than not to have happened, to some extent validating that there was a population engineering program that had taken place. There was this excess of people who were undocumented, they were irregular by way of status, they probably didn't have any visa, most probably came into the country illicitly, and so they came to Sabah because, first of all, there's a huge cultural proximity. People who lived in Mindanao, for example, they share very strong cultural ties with people who are living in the east coast of Sabah. There's a lot of political stability compared to what was going on in Mindanao in the 1970s. There was a sort of historical belief that the east coast of Sabah belonged to that. Project IC happened in a space where they utilized the people that were already there. They didn't necessarily invite more people in. The RCI concluded that Project IC was the work of rogue NRD officers out for extra income. But it did not, however, make any claims or refute whether it was a top-down directive. The report did not set out to find guilty parties. Resultantly, no legal actions have been taken against any complicitors. While the inquiry did not mention any political motivations behind Project IC, the political party that benefited most from this changed demographic was clearly UMNO. They joined the Sabahan political fray in 1994, campaigning in what was essentially a re-engineered demographic. They subsequently won their first ever election in Sabah after some defection from the opposition party. For the first three decades of its rule, Sabah politics was very unstable. Almost every 10 years you, have, you had a new government. And also in the 1980s, uh, Parti Besatu Sabah took power and the federal government didn't like it because they saw Parti Besatu Sabah as a Christian government. The main point of Project IC was to make Sabah a Muslim majority state and therefore in terms of the voting pattern, in terms of the seats in Sabah, after Project IC was implemented, the only outcome for any Sabah state government would be a Muslim majority government because the Muslim community had the largest number of seats in Sabah. 
Another reason for suspicion is the change in Sabah census categories. This started in 1980, combining all indigenous ethnic groups and Malays under one category called pre-Bumi. In this peer-reviewed study, the author observed how census data had been manipulated to cover up for the process of documentary citizenship for the benefit of UMNO. Rogue NRD officers do not have the power to manipulate census categories. The census has always been conducted independently by the Department of Statistics. Someone higher up would have made the call. How high up? Some say all the way to the top. It is the belief that Mahate was the one who suggested and approved this particular granting of citizenship to people. During the RCI, a witness that claimed to have done extensive research on Project IC pointed towards Tun Mahathir on being the person to approve the project. And there was this news report where a voluntary worker in the Amno Kota Kinabalu office alleged that Tun Mustafa, then Sabah's chief minister, had told her that this was all being done under the orders of Tun Mahathir. That would explain the other name that Project IC goes by. Project M, Mahadeer. Tun Mahadeer has officially denied knowing about the existence of Project IC, but later acknowledged that citizenship was given out to Filipino refugees and migrants that had been living in Malaysia for a very long time. The data, however, shows that population engineering began long before he came into power, although it appears to have accelerated during his time. So here's where we are now. The 2012 RCI seems to be the final word from powers that be on what happened despite receiving heavy criticism on the report. Project IC has left indigenous communities feeling outnumbered, threatened, and disenfranchised. Secession, which will require a whole other episode, and populist ideas like dedicated Sabahan ICs have also been mooted. You're never going to be able to solve it without accepting that you're going to offend somebody regardless of how you go around it because there's no happy or easy way to deal with the Sabah issue. The problem is, is the Sabah Project IC issue and the irregular migrant issue has been left alone for so long that it's sort of like, it's weaved itself into a Sabah narrative that's so difficult to separate. The entire region of Borneo is a microcosm in itself, and before modern borders, migration across states were commonplace. The usual template of identity does not work in this situation. So in our annual group hug, let's not forget that our siblings have valid complaints about the power disparity that has only grown since that very first group hug. Us citizens might have had nothing to do with these policies, but we can acknowledge and try to right these wrongs by holding those responsible accountable.